Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening. It's Jeremiah J. Mamman, or J. Man Speaks. We're just going to do a quick tutorial here in Zoom settings. I'm going to go through the settings themselves, show you what my settings are, and then explain to you why I feel you should change your settings. Because a lot of these features that Zoom has added in their recent updates won't be active unless you go in and change the settings. They don't say, hey, go in and change the settings. Okay. So let's go. Here we are in the Zoom settings. Hold on one second as I mirror my Zoom over here. So you're gonna go to zoom.us. You don't wanna do it within your settings while you're on a Zoom. Do this before your Zoom starts. It will work that much better. Okay. So I come in and go zoom.us and then I come in to, on the left-hand side here, the sidebar, you see where it says settings. And then just go through from top to bottom. It goes right in order. But let me explain. Okay, first one. Security required that all meetings are secured with one security option. Yeah, okay. Either got to be a passcode waiting room or only authentic, authenticated users can join. If you're going to be doing Zoom meetings where you're sharing out the Zoom meeting ID, this is a must. This will prevent you from having Zoom bombers come in. Okay, number two, waiting room. Absolutely. Boop, boop. Check that box every single time, uh, even when it's somebody I know because I use this. It's just another way to exceed expectations. Okay, here are your options. Everyone will go in the waiting room. Users invited during the meeting by the co-host will bypass. So like if you have somebody who's late for a meeting, like a, another speaker or instructor or something like that, you send them the invite, the, they'll get bypassed the meeting room. Allow participants in the waiting room to reply to hosts and co-hosts. Again, one of the updates when they're in the waiting room, if they're going, when is this going to start? You can reply back to them, okay? People in the waiting room are sorted by join order so that the participant order, you know who was there first and who was there last. I like that. And then place participants in the waiting room if the host and co-host are not present, if they lose internet connection during a meeting. A meeting. Again, worst case scenario, your presenter loses internet, loses power, something happens, they drop off the call. It doesn't end the Zoom meeting altogether. What it will do is put everybody in the waiting room. So any good virtual presenter should be able to recover within a few minutes or go to their backup device, continue the meeting, and then just invite everybody back in, okay? Now here are some other things. Here where it says edit options, go like this. And this is where you would edit all your options, right? Who should go in? Everyone, join order or alphabetical, more options, users invited, okay? All the things I just talked about. I already set that. Customized waiting room. This is a game changer, my friend, okay? I change this for every meeting that I have. I just go in, I, like uh, yesterday I met with a client and I said, hey, Mr. Vickers, check this out. You know, um, welcome to the Monero team reception area. We look forward to talking about your real estate dynasty real soon. Well, we'll let you in in just a moment, right? So it was, it was customized. It was the first time, uh, for the most part, anybody ever sees a greeting in, they call it a waiting room, but I call it a reception area. It just sounds much better. Nobody wants to wait, but a reception area is, is more professional. So you'd come in here and rather than the default screen or just a logo and description, a video, you check that. Okay. Say so I remove that and then you would upload a video from there. Okay. If I go zoom, Fatigue is what I'm going to change it to, probably. Uh, the cure for Zoom fatigue. Because that be me. Okay, that's 50 seconds. It's got to be short. And if it doesn't work because the file's too big, then you have to save it in a lower resolution. Okay, I'm not going to teach you how to do that right now. Just go to the Google uh, or go to YouTube. Find yourself a video to do that. Pretty simple, just can't be super long. You could also put in here like, best practices for the Zoom, things that they require for the Zoom, things that they're gonna require for CE, whatever you wanna do to kind of educate them while they're waiting, great opportunity, okay? That's taking forever, one second, please. All right, back on, that's saved, no problem. Okay, new waiting room and join before host experience, your participants will continue. The waiting room and join before host experience has been improved and simplified. When disabled, your participants will continue to see the current waiting room experience. Okay, when disabled. Go like this. Let's see that. Okay. Require a passcode when scheduling new meetings. Again, these are all, 
these are personal preferences. I don't care much. Um, but the passcode will be generated when you schedule a meeting and it typically that's embedded in the link itself. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Personal meetings are not included. You can create your own password for your personal meeting and personal meeting ID, right? Require a passcode for instant meetings. Random passcode will be generated when starting an instant meeting different than a personal meeting room, right? I can create a meeting like this and meet with you on the spot. Uh, or I have my personal meeting uh, room, which is my phone number, 585-484-0505. I know that. It's easy to remember. Okay, and then my URL is like zoom.us slash jmanzooms. You can customize both so they're easy to remember and help you with the branding. Okay, webinar passcode. You can generate that if you do webinars. I don't do too many of those. Require a passcode for participants joining by phone. Again, just another layer of security. We don't typically have somebody joining by phone, but uh, you could just, why not? Check that. Embed a passcode in the invite link for one click join. I always have that done so that it just kind of eases your workflow. You don't have people going, what's the passcode? I can't get on. And you got 50, 100, 500, 700 people. That could be a big pain in the butt. Okay, so make sure you do that. Um, only authenticated pan panelists can join webinars. Um, I don't really care much about that one. Um, only authenticated meeting participants and webinar attendees can join meetings and webinars. Again, this might be if you're going to do internal meetings or Zooms where you have a specific URL like XYZ Realty or NYSR.com to be sure that only people with that specific URL uh, email addresses can join. Just another layer of security. Okay, if waiting room is enabled, phone only users will be placed in the waiting room. If waiting room is not enabled, phone dial in only users will be blocked from joining the meeting. Well, waiting room is enabled, okay? Uh, because another security measure, okay? Block users in specific domains from joining meetings and webinars. If you found that you were getting Zoom bombed by certain domain names, you can block uh, users from those domains here. Okay, if you went like this, then you would put multiple domains there. Okay, only authenticated user can join meetings from web client. Again, layer of security, yes. Okay, because web client means they don't actually have a Zoom license or a Zoom account. I don't necessarily want that anymore. We're three years and change into the pandemic or after the pandemic began, you shouldn't have to just do it from web client anymore. Um, approve or block entry for users from specific regions. Again, if you find that you have Zoom bombers or problems from specific regions, you check that, and then you can put the countries or regions that you want to block. Okay? Scheduling the meeting. Host video. Start meetings with the host video on. I like that. Participants video on. I like that as well. Okay? They can change it during the medium meeting, but I find that people are more likely to have their video on if their video is already on. Okay? Audio type, telephone and computer audio. I like to do both just in case there's any issues uh, because computer audio, if you have an issue, then they can dial in on their telephone and it's much better. I never have this setting checked. Allow participants to join before host because that would allow somebody to join your meeting before you arrive, right? If somebody gets in super early, now they're just sitting in your Zoom room, not your Zoom room, but your Zoom meeting uh, all alone. You can do whatever they want, okay? Block people and well, depending on, on your settings. Okay, allow Zoom rooms to start meeting with host key. Most of you don't have Zoom rooms, you won't have to worry about that, okay? Enable personal meeting ID. Okay, I told you that earlier. Personal meeting ID is nine to 11 digit number that is assigned to your account. You can visit personal meeting room here to change your personal uh, meeting settings. I'm not gonna go into that now, but you should do that and then make it easy to remember. Make it your office phone number and then customize the URL and then customize the password so they're easy to remember. Use personal meeting ID when scheduling a meeting. No, I don't like that because um, those are special meetings I like to schedule. Um, add watermark. Each attendee sees their own email address embedded as a watermark on any shared content, participant, video feeds, or both. Hmm. Let's do that. That wasn't. That's a new, a new setting. Okay. Single instance repeated uh, meeting and webinar attendees will need to authenticate prior to joining. No, it requires authenticated meeting only. So I'm going to uncheck that. Okay. Mute all participants when they join a meeting. That's a must because they come in unmuted. And what happens? You hear them flushing the toilet. You hear them talking. You hear them on the phone. You hear all these other things. So make sure 
you do that. Upcoming meeting reminder for those of us who have back-to-back-to-back Zoom sometimes, uh, enable that so that you don't have one meeting that's running over and you're missing the next meeting. Meeting templates allow admins to define meeting templates and make them available to users. If you have an admin for your Zoom account, check that. Same thing for webinar templates, check that, okay? Uh, but majority of you are just one person on a Zoom license. In meeting basic, require encryption. I don't, uh, between Zoom Cloud, Zoom Client, and Zoom Room, turn all settings are required for third-party endpoints. This may be required if you're teaching this for uh, using it for educational purposes, but for the most part, you don't need it. Uh, meeting chat, enabled. Everyone and anyone, okay? Don't think if you lock this down to you and the host or the participants and hosts can only participate that they're not gonna talk to each other. They're still gonna talk to each other. They're gonna talk to each other via text, via Instagram DM, via Facebook Messenger. So at least keep it within the platform so they're less distracted. It's your job to manage their attention and if they're not focused, uh, then that's on you, okay? Only users in your account can chat. So I like to do allow users, everyone, Okay, new meeting chat experience, threaded replies, text formatting, quoting, and inline image preview. Additional features can be configured below, right? Uh, we allow them to delete messages in meeting chat. This is great in case somebody says something you don't like, boop, boop, you can delete it, but they, they could also uh, delete it themselves. Enable the screenshot feature in meeting chat. When the settings enabled, participants can send screenshots during the meeting. So if they see something, like if you're, uh, if they're like, this is what I see in my computer, you can say, send a screenshot. Boom, goes right there, goes in the meeting chat. Okay, allow participants to react meeting chat messages using emojis. Okay, it just adds to the engagement. They're used to text messaging. They're used to using emojis and stuff. And so they can actually upvote. They can add emojis to other people's uh, comments. Makes it more fun, more engaging. Meeting chat direct messages. Allow meeting participants to send direct messages to other participants. Yes. Meeting chat autosave, automatically save chat message to a local file on the host computer when the meeting ends. Yes, okay? You'll even know the messages that they're sending to each other, not to you. Think about that for a sec. Okay, webinar chat, again, allow uh, webinar participants. We're talking about meeting and then there's webinars, right? Allow webinar participants to send chat messages. Yes, panelists can chat with hosts and all, all panelists. Um, panelists can chat with everyone. Attendees can chat with everyone. I rarely do webinars, so I didn't have that setting set. Uh, everyone, allow panelists to send direct messages to other panelists, allow users to save chats from the webinar. Um, everyone. Okay. And then I'm going to hit save on that. Webinar chat auto save, sound notification when someone joins or leave. Oh, for the love of God, please keep that off. That can be the biggest distraction. Uh, even if you have your, you know, it's one person's the speaker and you have a host, then every time somebody joins, bling, 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 drives me bananas. Okay. So don't, don't have that enabled. Okay. You can see when they come in and out. Um, if you're a one person show still, I think have it disabled, just be on the lookout if somebody comes in or disable your waiting room so that people can freely come in or keep an eye on your waiting room. Send file uh, files via meeting chat. Yes, I don't have a maximum file size, nor do I only allow specific file types. Makes it easier. Send files via webinar chat. Yeah, allow panelists to send bios, files via webinar chat. Feedback to Zoom if there's an issue. Display end of end meeting experience feedback survey. Uh, who cares? This one that I don't. <laughs> you could check it if you want. I mean, nobody's going to really do it or give you accurate feedback, I don't think. Uh, co-hosts, allow the host to add co-hosts. This is important. I've been on, uh, you know, I've been speaking on other other people's accounts where they don't have this setting. And so they come on and they go, okay, I'm going to make you the host. So then they make me a host and then they're just a participant. They can't see the participants. They can't see people in the waiting room. They lose all of that functionality. So make sure that you have co-hosts on, especially if you're going to do like a panel discussion or something then everybody's a co-host that's on the panel, right? So they can see all the things that you see. They can see the chat and everything else, and you can chat with them uh, as you need to. Allow hosts to add polls before or during a meeting. A meeting. Maybe my accent's coming out, right? Allow hosts to create advanced polls and quizzes. Yes. Allow hosts to upload image for each question. Yes. Allow alternative hosts to add or edit polls and quizzes. Yes. 
Um, require answers to be anonymous. That's one of the updates in the last, you know, last few updates with the polls. I don't like that, but you can still allow people to be anonymous and then allow hosts to create breakout rooms from poll results. This is fantastic. Think about it for a second. You do a poll in the beginning and let's say uh, I'm doing like a objection handling session, right? And I go, okay, today we're going to role play five different things. Fizzbos, expireds, sphere of influence, open house, and something else. Old expireds, okay? Five different things. How they answer, they are then automatically grouped into a breakout room. So then when we want to do breakouts, I go, okay, uh, it, you know, how you answer the survey is how we're going to, you know, the rooms we're going to put you in uh, because that's what you wanted to work on today. Boop, automatically breakouts into how they, they answer the survey. A million different ways you can use this, but fantastic, huge time saver. Meeting survey, allow hosts to present survey to participants once a meeting has ended. You could use that to get survey or information from your participants. Webinar polls and quiz quizzes, again, same thing as the meeting. Same thing, webinar survey. Allow show meeting control uh, toolbar. Always show meeting control toolbar. Yes, if you have multiple screens and lots of windows, do that because you'll lose the toolbar. I've done it and I'm like, and you're in the middle of your flow and you're like, where to go, where to go, where to go? And yeah, make sure you have that. Uh, show Zoom windows during screen share. Yes, again, so you don't lose the windows. Screen sharing, allow host participants to share their screen or content during meetings and, and webinars. Well, yeah, right? You wanna make sure that's, that is set up. And then how many participants can share at the same time? Multiple, I like that. I don't always use it. But you never know, right? If you have two people presenting, uh, you can do it simultaneously. Multiple participants share simultaneously. Dual monitors are recommended. Who can share? All participants. And the security on this can be changed in the middle of your meeting, okay? Um, who can start sharing when somebody else is sharing? Um, all participants or hosts only, you decide. Okay, disable desktop screen sharing for meetings you host. Not going to do that. Disable screen sharing when guests are in the meeting. Not gonna do that. Annotation. This is a great way to boost your engagement. It allows you, so let's say in a session, I, I wanna show a speaker, uh, a virtual speaker's background. And I'm gonna say, hey guys, let's circle all the things that you think are distracting in this background. And they go, <laughs> okay, the annotation feature has to be turned on. Allow saving of shared screens with annotations. Um, Again, it makes it a little bit more engaging. Whiteboard, uh, host participants to share a whiteboard during a meeting. This is a whiteboard like you would use in the classroom, except it's virtual. It is now available offline as well and, and saved within your Zoom account and accessible for uh, other people offline, okay? Automatically create a local export when sharing is stopped. So if I share the whiteboard, we write notes on something, say we do a pair and share in our groups, and then I have somebody take notes on the whiteboard. Once that's done being shared, then it, it saves it as a PDF and I can share that back to everybody else. Okay, remote control. During screen sharing, the person who is sharing can allow others to control their shared content. This is fantastic when you have a below average presenter or somebody who's not very tech savvy and it allows you to control their PowerPoint or their PDF or their presentation or whatever it is in the case that they're having some challenges. Has to be checked though, allow remote controlling using uh, user to share clipboard. Okay, slide control, same thing during the presentation, person who's sharing can allow others to control the PowerPoint or keynote. Yes, please. Okay, nonverbal feedback. Uh, this is again, boost your engagement, allow meeting participants to communicate without interrupting by clicking on icons. Yes, no, slow down, speed up, and coffee cup. I use the coffee cup, uh, it's, it's when they're AFK, away from keyboard, okay? which means like they went to get coffee or they're on the phone or they're answering an email. It just means if you ask them a question at that point that they're unavailable. We use this for role play calls. We use it for all a number of things. Just means you're in listen only mode and that's why you're not responding at the time. When they come back, they can say, I'm back. And then the coffee cup disappears, okay? Meeting reactions, again, all emojis, not selected emojis. All these are meant to boost Engagement, keep people going, right? Webinar reactions, same thing. Um, allow remove participants to rejoin. Nay, nay, I have that unchecked because if I kick you out, uh, I don't want you to be able to rejoin 
or join from another device. Show invite a list in the participants panel. Users invited to meetings on other platforms will also be shown on this list. I never use that, so that's not checked. Allow users to change their name when joining a meeting. Yeah, enable that uh, because sometimes they're on somebody else's Zoom account, their wife, their cousins, their coworkers. They can change it, especially if you're doing CE, right? Make sure they change it. Or if you're doing something within your company, they can change their name. Or if you want to make it fun and say, hey, what do you want me to call you today? That's your name. Change that. Okay, but you have to have that checked. Allow participants to rename themselves. We said that. Allow hosts or, or co-hosts to rename participants in the waiting room. Again, saves you time. If you see somebody in there and you want to change their names, you can do that. Or if you have a, a secondary host, they can do that as well. Hide participants' profile pictures in a meeting. Uh, I don't like to do that. I like to see their profile pictures if they have one. So at least it's a little bit better than just looking at a name. I can see a face. Uh, in meeting advanced report to zoom allow users to report meeting participants for inappropriate behavior to zoom's trust and safety team for review this setting can be found on the meeting information panel okay i like that webinar session branding allow hosts to visually customize the webinar by setting a session background hosts can also set the virtual background and name tags to apply okay pretty cool adds adds to more branding q and a in meetings one of the most recent updates this was available for webinars for a while but now it's available for meetings as well, but you have to have it checked or will not be available in the meeting, okay? Q&A webinar, again, enable that. Breakout room for meetings, duh, yeah, make sure you have that. Um, I don't like to assign participants to breakout rooms and scheduling. I do like broadcast message to participants, so you can message everybody in the breakout rooms. One of the most recent updates is the broadcast voice. You could do sound effects, you could do music playing into the thing, so I like to go, one minute left, everybody. Two minutes, three minutes, right? And you broadcast that using B, uh, but they all have to make, you have to make sure that they have the most updated uh, or more updated version. Okay, create, rename, and delete uh, breakout rooms when rooms are open. I do a lot of stuff with breakouts. It adds to the pair and share and the group activities and just keeping things moving. Allow host to view activity status of participants of break room, breakout rooms. Again, great way for you as the host to monitor what is going on in the breakout rooms. You'll know who has their camera on. You'll know who has their microphone on. So you'll know if you had a, a larger group, you can just look at that and see who's talking and who's not talking, who doesn't have their camera on, and who's following directions. Okay? Um, allow a meeting host to provide one-on-one -on -one remote support to another participant. I don't have that checked because I don't want to get involved with that. That could be, be just be crazy. Allow host to type closed captions or assign a participant third-party service to add closed captions. Yes, depending on your level of Zoom, uh, you might have that right here, automated captions, right? Allow users to enable automated captions in these languages and in, in meetings. Always have that enabled. You wanna make sure that you're ADA compliant. You have somebody who has difficulty hearing. At least they can visually see the captions, okay? Full transcript, allow viewing a full transcript in the in-meeting side, side panel. Have that checked. Save captions, have that checked. Language interpretation, again, uh, we wanna make sure we're able to communicate. If somebody's English is not their, their first language, uh, then you can put your top nine, whatever those might be. I have English, Chinese, Japanese, German, French, Russian, Portuguese, Spanish, or Korean. If I had a language, then I would add one. You can have up to nine. So I would add one and, and then remove one that's not being used. Uh, sign language inter interpretation view. Hosts, uh, allow hosts to assign participants as sign language interpreters who can interpret one language into sign language in real time. Hosts can assign interpreters when scheduling during the meeting. Okay, so I can assign one person if you know somebody needs to have um, ASL done, then you can assign one person to do that. Far end camera control, allow another user to take control of your camera during a meeting. Uh, that can help. I mean, it's very rare that you're going to need that. Okay. HD video. I love video. Makes me happy. Fills my soul. And so you're going to want to make sure that that's on and that it's full HD. Okay. Cause the standard is 720p. You'll never know that cause they'll never tell you. Okay, virtual backgrounds, I'd like to enable those as well. We're almost done. It's all very important, okay? Calendar and contacts. All the way to the top. Wait, there we go. Yeah. Uh, automatically sync, sync Zoom calendar events, information by direction between Zoom and integrated calendars. Yeah, I thought I had that set. I don't know why that changed. Um, I don't know why this went down. Okay, 
me go all the way up here. Okay, here we are. Uh, immersive view. Again, that's a little bit different. Rather than the gallery view, it's immersive. It's limited in its capacity. I think it's 15724 or something like that. Uh, but enable that. Check that out. See if you like it. Focus mode. I've used this uh, twice in the last week. When somebody has really poor bandwidth, what it does is, like it says here, um, allows only hosts and co-host videos and profi profile pictures during a meeting. Everybody else gets shut off so that you can have that extra bandwidth for the person that needs it, the speaker. Okay? Allow hosts to enable focus mode when scheduling, but you could also enable it while your session is, is going on. Um, identify guest participants in the meeting webinar. I don't need to do that. Auto answer group and chat. Uh, never use that, so that's why it's not enabled. Send ICS calendar attachment along with webinar invitation reminder. I want any number of ways for people to save my Zoom meeting to their calendar, however they're using their calendar, whatever calendar they're using. So I enable that. Okay, only show default email when sending email invites. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that way you can still invite multiple ways. Use HTML format to, for, um, use HTML format email for Outlook plugin. Uh, use Outlook. If you don't use Outlook, don't worry about it. Allow users to select stereo audio in their client settings. I have that set because I do a lot of stuff with music, and I want to make sure they can hear it, hear it and have it be the best that it can be. Show a join from browser link. Allow participants to bypass the Zoom application download process and join a meeting directly from their browser. We're going to do that because uh, I don't want that. Uh, show always join from browser option when joining from Zoom, Zoom join.zoom.us. No. Allow live streaming of meetings. Make sure that that's checked. Okay, look at this. All of them. You want to live stream. It's also a great way to handle overflow for your webinars. Allow live streaming of webinars. Yes, again, all of those. When the webinars reach capacity, remind users to watch the live stream. Right? Think about that. I had an issue one time where my webinar reached capacity and I was freaking out, man. I had 2,765 people registered and the capacity of the webinar was 100. So in that example, we could have live streamed to Facebook. They could have watched it on Facebook and I could have monitored the chat. Great way to handle uh, the overflow without having to upgrade your Zoom license. Uh, show a custom disclaimer when starting or joining a meeting hosted by your account. So this could be custom. You could check that. Uh, request permission to unmute. I have that checked. This option is in the scheduler to request permission to unmute meeting participants and webinar panelists. Permissions once given will apply in meeting scheduled meeting. I can unmute you. Okay, it makes it easier when you have people that are not tech savvy. Okay, enable stop incoming video feature allows meeting participants to turn off all incoming video feeds on their screen. Does not affect other participants to access this feature. Click the view button at the top right. Okay, again. They can save on their bandwidth or they just want to stay focused. Okay. After reordering the gallery, the host may save the arrangement as a custom seating chart to the unique meeting ID. Um, I have it. I don't use it all the time. I actually like to rotate people in the gallery as they are talking or use speaker view. It helps me to maintain eye contact with the camera, but that can be a personal preference. I would say have that checked. Um, allow users to join external webinars and events through mesh. Nope, not going to happen. Um, Calendar and contacts, automatically sync Zoom calendar events, information bidirectionally between Zoom and inter integrated calendar. So if you have a Google Calendar, have that check or I, I, anything else that you're going to be integrating with Zoom, check that. Okay, email notification when a cloud recording is available. Notify when audio transcription is available. I'm going to uncheck that because I don't care. Um, you could send a copy to alternative hosts, send a copy to the person who scheduled the meeting or webinar for the host. Okay, I like that. When attendees join the meeting before hosts, uh, notify me because if you're there early, I want to make sure not to keep you waiting. Uh, you know, reward the people that are that are doing good things, getting there early. Uh, don't make them wait. When a meeting is canceled, notify host participants when the meeting is canceled. Yes. Alternative host is set or removed from a meeting. Yes. When someone scheduled a meeting for a host. Yes. Right. I want to be notified when anything changes with a meeting because we're all busy. You don't want to show up for a meeting that didn't happen, was rescheduled, or was canceled altogether. Uh, high potentially sensitive information on mobile task switcher. So by enabling this option, iOS will blur the screenshot in the task switcher when multiple apps are open. Okay, so if you're sharing your screen or doing stuff on your mobile device, it won't share sensitive information. Uh, include email addresses and attendee reports for webinars without registration. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, invitation email. You can customize. 
this if you wanted to. Schedule privilege, you can assign users in your account to schedule meetings on your behalf. And that is all my folks. <laughs> my folks. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying. Okay, I know that was a lot. Take it piece by piece, 30 minutes that will change your life and greatly enhance your Zoom experience. Termine CMM and Roger, man speaks. All I want to do is a room, 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 and a zoom, zoom. Make it a great thing.